Okay, so here's our mirrored bifold doors, and it's important to remember that when you're handling these doors, I always prefer to keep them standing straight upright because mirrors, as you know, are flexible and you never want to lay these down flat. Now, yes, they do have a little bit of a metal support around the edge, but it's the center part of it that I'm worried about. So unless you have some kind of uh, two by fours or something to keep them flat, don't lay these down you know, flat or anything. You always want to stand them up. All right, so now we're going to walk over here to the closet door. I'm going to take, this is the track here. And what you're supposed to do is measure across the top, and then we're going to cut it like this here, and cut it in half, and the other part of this will become the bottom track. So if we come over here, what we do is I'm just going to put it right along the top there, and then see how on this end here I've got it so it's right at the edge of the door opening, and then I'm going to come over here and mark the opposite end of the other door opening there. See, so now we have a mark there, and I'm going to cut this on the angle grinder. All right, so I got this new diamond cutting blade. We're going to try this out. Got it flipped over. I gotta make one more cut right here for the bottom piece. Take a close look here at the metal piece here that was cut. You can see it does a nice, good, clean job there. Only took a couple of seconds to cut through it. Okay, so now that we have our top and our bottom tracks here, we've got these components that we need to put together. So the big spring you use if you're doing four different doors, which means you're buying two sets of bifold. Here we're just using the one set because we're, we're doing a double door and a 30 inch hole opening there. So we're going to put this spring inside this clip and when we're done it will look like this. And then you have to insert it into these tracks before you mount the tracks to the top or the bottom because these have to kind of clip in and I'll show you in a second here. They kind of fit right around the metal frame. All right, so here's our piece here, and he just fits right on there. See that, like an X-wing fighter, just kind of fitting right in that groove right there. And then he goes right down there. And so here he is now, he's just free to glide around back and forth. So what happens is he'll stay over here on the right-hand side, and then on the left-hand side is where we're going to mount the pivot hardware. So the door will pivot over there, and when it closes, it pushes up against the spring, up against the wall. Now, if there was another set of bifold doors, they would be pushing against each other. Okay, so that right there is the pivot block clamp. And this comes apart into two pieces, so you have to undo the screw so that you'll end up like this. And you take the bottom piece here, and you slide it right into the end of your bottom track there. Because this end here is going to be where we have the, the bottom pivot. And then you take the other piece here. And you just put it right on top there. And you run the screw in. And you tighten that down. And then what happens is once you get both the upper track and the bottom track in place there, the upper track will also get one mounted on its end. And just to kind of show you here, they have to be directly over each other. These pivot points have to be directly above one another. So you can accomplish that with a plumb bob. And if you don't have a plumb bob, then you can just put the doors in and set it and use a spirit level to make sure your doors are perfectly vertical once they're all in. And then once the doors are perfectly vertical, you would tighten this in place and you would tighten the other block in place on the upper track as well. 
but things can go a lot better if you do have a plumb bob with you. So anyway, you put this in, you'll tighten all this down here, and once the tracks are prepared and they each have their clamp and their spring, with the spring clamp in there, spring clip, then you'll be ready to mount the tracks. The track, this one will go on the bottom, and we have cement floor, so we have to use uh, tap cons. We have to pre-drill first with a masonry bit, a 3 16th inch masonry bit that goes with the particular screws that we're using, and then we can go ahead and get this fastened down. You know, something I just want to point out to you, make sure this is set in there so that the top part of the bracket rides on the top of the track, but yet the bottom part of it fits underneath the track. And that is so that you can make this thing go like this, because you may, you will have to adjust these doors once they're in, slide them left or right until they're at the right distance where you want them to be, and then the top part of the clamp gets screwed down to there. You would tighten it down with your screwdriver. So this could be put anywhere. It could be over here. Hopefully not that far out of whack. They, they say usually between a quarter of an inch and three quarters of an inch from the end should be sufficient. So somewhere in that area is what it should end up looking like when you're done. All right, so here we have to pull up the bottom track, the old one, and we're going to place the new one in its place there. We're going to have to tap con these down here because this is a concrete subfloor right here. So if you had a wood subfloor, it would be very easy for you to just simply screw into screws into the wood. But here what we have to use is a concrete bit on our drill and drill two holes and then put in the two Tapcon screws. Okay, so we have the bottom track just barely fit in there between the planks. We got really lucky there. And remember when you put the bottom track in, remember to make sure your spring is here and that it's on the opposite side from where the pivot point is going to be. Make sure your pivot point is in as well. So we have both of these in now, and now I'm just going to drill right there with my concrete bit. And I'm going to drill over on this side as well with a concrete bit. And then we'll get our tap cons in there. All right, these are the tap cons we're using. These are one and three quarter inch length. These are the shortest I can find. And these are white. So I get these so that they'll match the track. And this is our bit that we're going to use. vacuum out my holes after I drill them with a masonry bit to make sure that there's no cement powder down in there to uh, prevent your tap con from going all the way down. All right, so I wanted to point out one issue for you here. So you see, here's the top track. Now the top track, they want us to mount it like this so that it will be flush with the front of the opening like that. That's how they want it to be. And same with the bottom track. But you see what the builder did originally? They put their track in the middle of the doorway, not flush with the front. And because they did that, that means that their bottom track is also in the middle of the doorway. It is not in the front of the doorway. So we have to adhere to what the builder did because the floors have already been laid down here in front of the, the track space. And all we did was put our new track there. So what we have to do then is make sure that this top track is now plumb with the bottom track. So we have to set this top track in pretty much in where they had this one here. And we'll just make sure that it is plumb. All right, so remember when you're putting the top track on, don't forget, just like on the bottom track, you gotta have your spring in on one side and your pivot point has to be in on the other side. So you notice right here it says it fits an opening from 80 and 3 quarters inches to 81 inches in height. So this means that you got to make sure that your door 
is at least 80 and 3 quarter inches tall, the, the opening, your rough in opening. Okay, but the problem is, you can see here, the builder only gave us a 79 and a half inch tall door opening. So that's going to be a problem for us. So this could be one possible solution for you is to use a trackless bottom where you just have this bracket on the floor down at the bottom so it's not raised up so high with that little wall that you see that they have on the bottom of the tracks. So here's what we're talking about. So you can see how this is the inside of the closet side and you can see how the, low, the track wall is right here. It's flush with the floor. However, the front side of it is not. It sticks up way far. So let's take a look at that. See that? So that could be hampering you also. There. See how tall that is off the floor there? Alright, so before we connect the, the pins up and everything to the doors, I want to just show you. I made this little drawing here to to illustrate how these all work. So your bifold doors are here. Here's your two doors. And the outer square here is your door opening. And so what happens is, in our case, they're going to pivot on the left side. So you have a bottom permanent pivot here, you'll see. So this one here is going to be right down here on the floor at the track, the bottom track. Then the upper one here is on a spring, see here? So what happens is we'll put the floor one in first, and then we'll tilt the door back up. We'll push this down, and he'll snap into place up there at the upper pivot point. The other two are guides, so on the right-hand side we're going to have a guide here, and this is what the guide is. This guide roller slips. He's also on a spring here, see? He'll go up into the track, the upper track there. And likewise on the bottom, this other guide here will go into the bottom track, and that's pretty much all there is to it. Now, the idea, the way the, the whole thing works, and this is why people always get their bifold doors incorrect or out of a whack, is these two pivots right here have to be perfectly plumb right directly over each other using like a plumb bob or a good spirit level and this door has to be completely balanced so you you see how i drew this like reveal all the way around it this door has to be completely totally perfectly balanced in that space and when it's not that this is what happens you know like this end will start scraping so if we're off balance this way you'll start scraping the floor with it, or it'll start banging into its own track and it will never roll. So that's the problem, is people don't get the doors perfectly aligned. This pivot point has to be directly underneath that pivot point. So let's go ahead and plug these into the doors, and then we'll go ahead and get the doors situated and installed. So this is the proper way to install your bifold mirror closet doors. All right, so this is the bottom one. And remember, this is the one that's permanent, but it's adjustable with the Allen wrench that comes with it. So to adjust the height of the door, either up or down, you stick the Allen wrench right into the top of the bolt here where there's a hex hole, and you just turn it until it adjusts it. And it'll slowly unscrew this out of the bottom of the door until it raises the door height. So you got to remember to know which side of your doors, which orientation you're dealing with here, of where your pivot points are going here. Because see, here's a, uh, you got the doors laying down and it's face down, but now you're like, okay, well, which way am I going to pivot? So remember, when this is in place, this will be the left side of our door once it's standing up and facing that way. Okay, now we come to the other side of the door, which is the top here now. And now we're going to insert the upper pivot pin in here. And that's the springy one, remember? So we'll get all these in snug. Okay, the remaining one, remaining two of these here, the remaining two of these guides here are going to plug into the other side of the door. Okay, here's the upper track guide there. So we now have all four pivots and guides are all installed here and we are now ready to install the door. Okay, so they want you to use this Allen wrench here that you stick it into the top of the bolt. 
fits in right up here. And you can turn this to adjust the height. So they want you to have the bottom pivot pin there sticking out about three eighths of an inch. So that's about it right there. So you can see how it turns as we move the wrench here. Okay, so now we're ready to install the doors. This would be a perfect time if you haven't already to hit the subscribe button down below. And once you hit that subscribe button, you'll see that little gray bell. Click on that, and that will alert you to every time we put a new video so that you'll never miss a video. And also, if you like our video here, you can click on the thumbs up button down below. That lets us know that you like us. And any questions you have, please enter them in the comments down below, too. Okay, I just wanted to point out something to you before we set the doors down in the doorway here. We always put down protective paper or you can use a mover's cloth or a painter's cloth, but I highly recommend that you protect the floor in front of the door opening here because unless you have carpet, you don't want to risk the door scratching your wood floor. Remember, these doors are going to be mounted basically one quarter of an inch or so above the floor surface. So you're likely to be, you know, scratching it or you know, moving it, rocking it a little bit. And I highly recommend that you do this with two people. If you've never done this before, you really need to do it with two people because these doors are very unwieldy. And so the uh, problem is, is they can start moving and shifting on you and they're going to want to flip open and flip closed on you. It's a real pain in the butt. So until you've gotten used to it, I highly suggest you do this with two people. Okay. So now we're going to take the door, which is laying here on the mover's cloth, and we're going to install the doors now. And it's okay to have them lying down flat, you know, for this few minutes that we're putting these on here. Even the manufacturer says that you can do this. So normally you would want these standing up straight, but remember they're nice and flat and they're held flat and in position because they're on a flat floor. All right, so let's get them installed. All right, so right there you can see We've got that bottom pivot point. See right there, that bottom pivot pin is down inside the pivot point on this side of the bifold mirror door. So now we're going to straighten up the door near the top and release the upper pin into the upper pivot point of this bifold mirrored closet door. Okay, so here we go up at the top. There it goes. So now the top is in place. So now both the upper pivot point and the lower pivot point are now in place here on our bifold closet doors. All we have to do now is put the bottom guide onto the track on the lower end and the upper guide and the upper track over here on this side. Okay, so I just put the guide here in the lower here. And I can already feel how smooth the door is operating. Because it was level anyway, do you remember what I told you earlier about if you have this bottom pivot pin directly underneath the top pivot pin up there, the door is already balanced on this side. And now just putting the guide in here just gives it something to roll on. So the door is already smooth. Okay. Now, one little issue we're seeing right here, you see where the hinge is? The hinge wants to hit the track right there. So what we have to do is raise the door up a little bit more here with our Allen wrench right here, sticking it right there on the top of that pivot point. This is the adjustable one, so it'll raise the door up a little bit to give this hinge some clearance. Okay, so here we are with the upper on the top track, and there you go. We're locked in. So now we have all four pins and guides are all in. Now let's play with the adjustment of the door height. Okay, so as we can see above the door here, we've got about a quarter of an inch space between the top of the bifold mirror door and the upper track. Now the manufacturer wants you to have an eighth of an inch space, so we're going to have to jack the door up about an eighth of an inch. Okay, so this is a good learning experience for you because do you remember I mentioned to you that our door height was not high enough because the builder gave us a 79 and a half inch height on our um, rough in on the door opening. 
which is stupid because almost all doors are going to be like uh, 78 and a half inches tall. So you really need much more clearance than that. And so you can see what's happening here. The, the little hinge at the top of the door is banging into the upper track. And it's like just barely, it's like only if we had like a eighth of an inch more. And we've got it adjusted as far as possible because if you look at the bottom of the door, see there's one here. This one barely clears right now, but if I lower it any more to make the top one clear, then this one will bang. So we are left at an impasse here. And so what we have to do, and I'll show you here on this track here. This is stupid. I don't know why these guys do this, the manufacturers. The front of the track is at least a quarter of an inch deeper than the back of the track here, see? So what we have to do is we have to get another track that doesn't have this, this much height on it. And so typically you go to the hardware stores and you can buy these tracks. So here's a folding door hardware track set that you can buy. And this track here, as you can see, if we put it up next to the other one. We'll see if you can tell. It's not quite, let me see, I think the track goes this way. Yeah. It's, uh, if you put it right up to the other track here, you can see it's about uh, a quarter of an inch less height sticking down off of the roof there. So, what we're going to have to do now is take the door back off, all the hinges and everything, there, take the pins and pivots out, and we're going to have to remove this upper track and put this track in, which takes up less space, and pray that this one works, okay? And if that still doesn't help, then we have another quarter of an inch or so that we can buy down at the bottom track by doing the same thing at the bottom track. So what you thought was gonna be a quick 20 minute uh, put in a new door is quickly turning into hours of extra work simply because the builder gave you the improperly sized rough-in opening. Okay, so they do make those track sets in the hardware stores that you can buy that has an extra track, but the problem is is they won't fit this particular brand of hardware and layout and everything. So what I thought I would do with this is I'm going to take this off and just rotate it around 180 degrees, flip it around, see? So now the tall end of it is going to be in the back and the shorter end, which is about a quarter of an inch shorter, will be up at the, the front here. And hopefully that will give us the extra clearance that we need for that bracket to clear the front lip. I don't care if the back end of the track, if the back wall of it hangs down lower because it, it, the door doesn't go back that far. So let's go ahead and try this and see how this works. All right, so there the track has been flipped back around and now you can see the front of the track, the front wall of the track is now a quarter of an inch higher than the back of the track. Not the way we really wanted it to be, but nobody's going to be paying attention up top there. It's more important to get the door in there and functioning. So it seems our dilemma is not quite solved yet and won't be solved without some engineering action because watch this. So even though we get the door to work smoothly and close and everything, but it, it's not quite closed all the way because that upper hinge still won't clear the back part of this upper track here. So what we're going to do is get our angle grinder and use a, um, um, one of those metal carving wheels and a little grinder wheel and we're going to just cut a little clearance out of here enough to allow this guy to pass through here. And that's unfortunately the only solution we can do here because the builder gave us about an inch and a half lower height to this rough end than we're supposed to have. So you're gonna find that a lot maybe with older places or, or somebody didn't take the care to maintain the proper rough end height or width. Sometimes we see it on the width of the door frame as well. So this mirrored bifold closet door here um, is almost done. And just as soon as we get this part carved out here, we're fine. We can't lower the door anymore. It's already lowered as far as it can go at the bottom. Otherwise that hinge down there will be scraping the bottom track too. So there you have it. But at least 
at least over here, this, this little carve out that we're going to put here will be out of view because this is inside the closet. So they won't even see it from outside. So if we come around the front here and close it, you'll bear, you, you really can't, you can't even see it. I got the camera up level to it and you, you can't barely see it. Okay, so there's our notch cut out of the top of the track there. And let's see if that's enough. So we're gonna pull the door shut there. And yep, it sure is. Barely makes it in there. I might adjust a little bit right there on that edge there. Yeah, but this is what happens though when we're dealing with old construction from builders that don't quite do things the way you would hope they would have done it in the first place. And uh, you fight for every sixteenth of an inch. Okay, so now as we check the vertical level here on the end of the door, we can see we're nice and level there. So vertically we know we've got it perfectly up and down on the pivot points. Okay, so now the other question is, if I put my level up against the front of the glass, am I plumb? And the answer is yes, we are nice and plumb. So we know that the top pivot is directly over the bottom pivot. Okay, now this particular manufacturer wants the handle to be on the pivot side. So our pivot is over here. So it wants it on the pivot side panel and they want it 36 inches off the floor and a half inches in, one half inch in from the edge of the, the uh, leftmost bifold mirror closet door there. So we will take off my indicator tape. And so now the handle was on there. So my suggestion to you would be anytime you have a doorway that's over 30 inches wide, I highly suggest that you get yourself a sliding mirrored closet door instead. So here is a sliding mirror closet door that we installed here in the foyer. See this? These are much more reliable too. They're, they're, they're nicer looking, they're more reliable. Okay, so anytime you can get one of these, I would highly suggest you do this over a bifold door. Well, so now we're looking at the finished product right there. There's our bifold mirror closet doors that we finally got to fit into this 30 inch space here. And nothing short of a miracle folks because we had a rough end opening that was only 79 inches tall when you're supposed to have at least 80. And so we made that happen by stealing some of that back off of the back track there. And here's another reason why too. I mean, even though they open really nice and easy, the one thing about bifold doors is they always tend to have this problem here where they kind of want to jam. They just don't want to close easily with one hand. So sometimes you have to make sure that it's about like that before it'll push on its own, even though it's got the roller guide down there. Sometimes they're, the bifold doors are still a pain in the butt. And then there's always the risk that maybe a year or two down the road, these could come loose. You know, it depends on how, how bad you yank on them. Okay, so be gentle with your doors, just push them closed gently like that, and when you open them, you just open them gently like this, and don't yank on them too much, all right? So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope this was useful for you, I hope it helps you out as you go to and do your mirrored bifold closet door installation, and if you found this video useful, please give us a thumbs up down below, it lets us know that you like us. And don't forget to click on that subscribe button down below there too because you'll want to come back and binge watch many, many other how-to videos that we put up to help you through your demolition and your, um, your remodeling projects around your house. And when you hit the subscribe button, make sure you hit that bell icon next to it. That little bell icon will alert you every time that we upload a new video. And lastly, make sure you share this with your friends on Twitter and Facebook as well too. And that's it for this week, folks. We'll see you on the next video, and you have yourself a great week. Bye now.